Okay, I don't think anybody is left in the hall in front, so let's get started here. <coughs> well, okay, thank you all for coming. <laughs> Uh, actually, I was con I considered uh, starting the, the speech with are you ready to rock, but I think I will keep it for myself uh, right now. Well, uh, just as a quick start, who knew about Simpa just before coming here? That just existed, okay. Half of the attendance. <laughs> and who used it? Nobody. Okay, that's why we are here. <laughs> That's because Simpa is, a, under our opinion, a great software developed in Perl, and we wanted to bring it to the Perl community. Too bad there are too, so many good speeches at the same time. Anyway, uh, I'll tell you right now what it is. <coughs> Simpa means System de Multipostage Automatique, which means Automatic Multiposting System. It also means, in French, nice. Uh, it's an old timer. It's 17 years old. The first version was released on 1st April 1997. And well, yes, it's a mailing list manager. That means instead of sending one mail to a lot of people one by one, you send one mail to the mail server, uh, and the mail server does the rest. Okay, just like a lot of other mailing list manager, mailman, PHP list, and so on. So why did we bother presenting you this right here? Because Simpa can do much more than this. What it can do, its strongest, I can tell all the features, but its strong best uh, features are probably, probably its capacity to integrate an information system, uh, its capacity to industrialize list management uh, instead of doing it manually. Uh, an expressive and original uh, authorization mechanism, uh, group management capacities, which allows him to make, uh, make it become a, a small group manager. Uh, it's heavily customizable. You can change almost anything in Simpa, and so many, many more, but I have only 50 minutes, so I will stick to these few features. Um, well, <coughs> So I said it was developed since 1997. It's hosted by Renater right now. Originally, it was the Comité Réseau des Universités, which disappeared. Now it's Renater. It's the National Research and Education Network in France, same as ACAD here in Bulgaria. Uh, it's a free software. It's GPLv2. And uh, you can find it in most distribution. Uh, it's packaged. It's only integrated as a, in the Debian repository. Uh, for other distribution, you need to install specific uh, repositories. And we are thinking about cPanel because we heard about it for the first time here. <laughs> uh, just a little things we are quite proud of. So the majority of users are out of France. <laughs> so it comes from France, and most of our users are out of the border. That's why we develop it in English. But uh, a little bit of facts. The biggest list we ever heard about was 1.6 million subscribers. Um, the most virtual host on a single server were 30,000. It's uh, Infomaniac, a uh, web hosting company that did it. Uh, the most lists we heard about on a single server were 32,000 lists. And the most the biggest server, the most subscriber on a server is a server which has 3 million subscribers. What is, who are the users? Research and education. In France, 90% of organizations, uh, universities, research centers use SIMPA. Uh, French ministries use it also, different foreign affairs and so on. Uh, we have a lot of private companies using it. Iliad, Orange, Atos, Worldwide. Uh, hosting services, Infomaniac, a switch uh, provider, uh, give it at, out of the box for each of his uh, uh, customers. Uh, some organizations involved in social changes, RiseUp.net, uh, QueerNet for uh, uh, rights for people uh, with different orientations, and so on. NASA, UNESCO, CGT, which is uh, <laughs> an orga an orga French organization. And all of that is 99% Perl. So when we make speech about Perl, um, about Simpa, people often ask us, why didn't you do it with something most modern? And most of the time, we, we, we tell something that would look like, fuck you. <laughs> it's probably one of the best mail 
linked list manager. It's written in Perl and it works. Something we're proud of too. So it all started in France. It slowly s reached the bordering countries and now we have uh, users all over the world. Anywhere, anywhere, and someday soon we'll ruin the world. Thanks to Simpa. So, what can it do? Obviously, Simpa can send mails. Eh? After all, that's why you install a mailing list manager in the first place. Uh, what can it do about your mails? It has, obviously, bulk mailing cap capabilities. When you have to send uh, thousands, tens of thousands of mails at once, you need to take care of what you're doing. So you will group mails per domain, you will uh, customize uh, the frequency of mail, what you want to do. You need, basically on a mailing manager, you want to get, a, you get so your mails out the quickest way possible, but you don't want to look like a spammer. So you need to tweak it very finely. And Simpa allows you to do this. It supports a lot of uh, RFC, such as such like SMIME, in signing and encrypting mail, uh, DKIM. Uh, it brings protections against DMARC. Did you hear, hear about uh, DMARC? Okay, yes, it's a nice RFC, uh, which uh, enforces uh, mail policies for one domain. And recently, in April, something like this, Yahoo changed one single field in the DMARC DNS record, which broke all mailing list system in the world. Any mail sent from or to Yahoo just bounced. So we needed to get a protection against this. Uh, it gets bounced automatic management. You know you have a lot of errors when you, when you, when you deal with mails. So this is handled automatically by, mail, uh, by Simpa and not by the original sender. Uh, it can do variable envelope return pass, which is a technology which allows you to uh, automatically handle errors for address emails that are forwarded. Uh, it can do mail tracking. It's uh, privacy respecting mail tracking. We don't do uh, spy pixels. We just rely on what the RFCs allow, allow us to do. Uh, but that allows you to know what happened to the mail user by per user. Uh, you can make merging. So that means you can merge user data into a mail to send personalized email. We handled conferences this way to uh, inform authors about uh, which of their uh, contributions were accepted, what were the final format, and so on. And, uh, and here he has, it has uh, web archives with a controlled access. And that's about it. <laughs> I don't want to speak too long about mail sending, but because, because that's what, uh, that's, I don't know, uh, obvious. <laughs> just explain you how it works, just to give you a, a little insight about the mechanics uh, involved when a mail is sent. Uh, follow the blue envelope, it's a mail. So this mail is sent to a mailing list, it comes to your incoming MTA. This MTA was configured to uh, send this mail into specific spools belonging to Simpa. There, a dedicated daemon called Simpa.pl will take care of this mail. It will um, evaluate authorization, uh, customize the mail, and so on. If the mail is allowed to be uh, distributed, it is stored in a database. The database is used to allow you to have uh, distributed access to the mail to be sent. Remember, you receive one mail, you may have tens of thousands of mail to get out, and that means thousands of SMTP sessions to handle. So that's why we have a dedicated daemon, bulk.pl, that will only do one thing, send mail, send mail, send mail, send mail, create new SMTP session. So you can uh, distribute it across several servers, and as the packets are in an RDBMS, concurrent access is not a problem. So what happens to the mail once it, have, it, it, had been, it has been accepted? You see the red envelope here? Okay. It's a copy of the mail that's put to another uh, spool, uh, scanned by archivedepop.pl, another uh, daemon that will archive the mail. Okay. Then our bug.pl, uh, at the same time, our bug.pl will distribute the message your message is out. That's it. 
That's the big picture of uh, mail handling in SIMPA. So, <coughs> I spoke about uh, information system integration. So, the yellow ugly thing is the SIMPA software. It can be plugged to an MTA. It has a database backend. Uh, you will have a web server for the web interface, a referential, I mean data from your company or your organization that you will need to inject into SIMPA to create mailing lists. And you will have an authentication system. Currently, we know that SIMPA works with SendMail, PostFix, and Exim. Um, it supports five different uh, data RDBMS, MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, SQLite and Sybase with a little bemol about Sybase, which is hopeless. Um, it works with Apache, Lite HTTPD, and Nginx. Um, about the referentials, that's the interesting part, I think. Uh, these are all the resources you can use to populate a list, a mailing list, to create the subscribers in a mailing list automatically. You can use a relational database, you can use LDAP, you can use file, you can use web service as long as they return plain text. Uh, all this will be used to uh, synchronize mailing lists with external data sources. Uh, authentication, SIMPA adds, has a native authentication system with a dump uh, email address and password. Uh, it can be plugged also to CAS to an LDAP authentication system, and to Shibboleth. So, you see, it's aimed at working with all these pieces of software. Because SIMPA was created for universities. Universities are the big organization and important information system. So, uh, really quickly, it had to interact with all these pieces of information system. So, more or less, SIMPA alone, it's ugly, and uh, it's useless. You need all this row around it, and that's the main purpose of SIMPA. <coughs> I spoke about industrialization. Suppose you're in a university. Each time, each year in September, you have to create hundreds, thousands of new mailing lists. Uh, you can create all of them by, ma by, man, by, by hand. <laughs> by man, sorry. By hand. And uh, that's why we industrialize the system. So when first? When you create manually mailing lists, how does it work? You go to the web interface, SIMPA, and you have a, a small form in which you have a few values to fill. For one key, you, you fill the value. That will be the name of the list, the purpose of the list, the list owner, thing like this. We also have on the server a general configuration of the server that will provide detail, uh, uh, defaults, even for the information provided in this form just in case something went wrong. And you also have a list template. It's a TT2, TT2 file, template toolkit file. Sorry, do you see now? <laughs> uh, TT2 file. Basically the same structure as a final configuration file of SIMPA, just instead of values, for some of the parameters we have placeholders. And for some of them we can also make fixed values, that means any list created with this template will have this value when it's created. So, when the user push submit, all this is mixed together. First, we take the value uh, the, the user uh, submitted. They will always take the precedence to other, any other value. Um, we see that in the template we have a fourth value for key four, so it will be used also. And for key five, we have no information, so we take the default. That's the manual creation of a list in SIMPA. If you want to industrialize, industrialize it, sorry, uh, we are using list families. What is a list families? A list family is basically, uh, on the file system, it looks like a, a standard list template. It, all, it also has a template for the config file. But there is also an XML document. The, this document will define the list family. Look at how it looks. For each list we want created, we want to create, we have a list uh, tag. Inside this, we have several uh, XML tags. The name of the XML tag is the name of a parameter, and it contains the value for this list. And you can make as many uh, 
a list tag that you want. So all you have is to create this only once and create this XML file. Then with one single command of Simpa, you create all the lists. More interesting, if you change, want to change something here or you want to change the, the, the values for all the lists of the families, you just need to change the template, rerun the command and all the lists will be changed. That's industrialization. But for some cases, it's what, it was not enough. Suppose, well, that's why we created automatic lists. Uh, suppose you have a very large number of potential lists. Uh, suppose you are in an organization, you want to be able to contact people per categories. You have several locations. Is it an example? Yes. You have, I don't know, ranks. Is it a technician? Is it an engineer? Is it something like this, a researcher? A location, you have 10, uh, 100 locations, and you have uh, re units in your location. Suppose you have, for each of these categories, 20 values. That means 8,000 potential lists. Seriously, only 100 of them will be ever used. So you won't create 8,000 lists that will never be used. The idea with automatic list is to prepare a family and create the list only the first time it's used. The first time you send a message to the list, it's created. So, the name, the difficulty here is that the name of the list actually contains the value you would find in, in the XML file. You see? It looks like, looks like this. You have a prefix that tells Simpa it's an automatic list. And here you have field 1, field 2, field 3. And the value of field 1, the value of field 2, the value of field 3. That means if you run, write to this list that doesn't exist, you will create the list of all the engineers engineer in Sofia that watch, work in the research unit. Just a quick example. So you send the mail. Simpa analyzes the list name, put in memory that key 1 must have value 3, and creates the list with exactly the same mechanism as manual, manual creation and family creation. Okay, so it's hard uh, because you need to remember the formalism of automatic lists. So the people who developed it actually developed a Thunderbird uh, plugin just to make it uh, something you just need to click to contact people. It was not out of the box in Simpa. So uh, to let people use it, we just added uh, a part of the web interface that does exactly this. So part of the web interface in Simpa is just the configuration. You just have to make some configuration to get this. You have field 1 here, field 2, field 3. And when you click, I suppose I want to click, I want to reach researcher in the first uh, regional area which have some particularities. I just click here and click go to the list. The list is created. If the list existed already, it's not created anymore. And it, I'm redirected to the area where I can send a message from the web interface. Oh, more interesting. <laughs> uh, it, was do, it was done for labor unions, this particular feature. And you have several labor unions in one area. And as they will have all the lists from this family, from a family for a labor union, we have the same characteristics. That's why what we did was creating families of families with configuration. You can create as many families of automatic lists. So I think we'll stop there. It's enough uh, industrialization. OK, next topic, authorization. I say we, we were origi original about it. That's an interesting feature and one I, I like to point out. Um, Authorization in Simpa are handled by what we call scenarios. What's a scenario? It's basically it's a file named action.scenario. An action is what the user tries to do. Sending a mail, access uh, web archives, review the list of subscribers, etc. There are roughly 20 actions like this. Uh, and the name of the action is also the name of a parameter. Scenario is whatever you want to be. It's a character string that identify both the file, obviously, and the value for the action parameter you will have in a config list. 
example. <laughs> in the list configuration, you just say, uh, for the parameter send, the value is subscriber. That means anytime somebody will try to send a message, we will use the scenario called send.subscribers. But what is a scenario? Ha. It looks like this. It's a series of lines like this, which all have the same structure. You have a test, an authentication method, this arrow, and a decision. <coughs> lines are evaluated from the first one to the last one until one of the tests returns true. For example, the first line here tests whether the sender, well, the authenticated user we have, is subscribed to the current list. If so, we will allow the action. That means, we will, uh, if it's for the send scenario, we will allow him to send a message. If it's, if it's for the web archive scenario, we will grant him access to the web archive, and so on. So, we will stop processing the scenario as soon as a rule returns true. Something that's interesting is the authentication method. See here? The only difference between this line and this one is here. Here I wrote SMIME, here it's SMTP. That means this rule will be, will be evaluated only if we're handling a mail with a valid SMIME signature. If not, I will go to the next line. And in this, this line will be evaluated if uh, we don't have any means to authenticate the, the, the user except for the from field. So you can have several uh, level of strictness for your authorization scenario. You will may, for example, in this case, if it's SMIME, the user is allowed to do the action. If it's SMTP, I will request IUTH. That means I will uh, send him an email with a click. He needs to click to say, OK, it's me. I control this mailbox, and it's me that did the action. This is a little boring, but uh, we have a large number of tests. Is subscriber, is it list owner, and so on. And if it's not enough for you, you can use the, the custom condition test that, will, that allows you to uh, write a Perl module with the, a few constraints of, of the Perl module, obviously. And this code will be executed anytime you want to evalu ev evaluate a scenario with, a custom condi with this custom condition. So you can expand scenario as much as you want. We have four different authentication methods, SMIME, SMTP, MD5, DKAM. MD5 is particular. That means uh, most of the time, is, is it a, a user authenticated through the web interface? Uh, and the decision uh, can be do it. That means we accept to execute the action. Reject? No. It can be a reject quiet if you don't want to inform the user that we, he's, he's not allowed. Uh, owner, that means request authorization for, from owner. Uh, that's for moderation, for example. And so on. We have roughly eight, nine uh, decisions possible. So it's not yes, no. It's, it's not only is the user subscribed or not. You have a lot of expressivity with this mechanism. And that's something we're considering porting to CPAN soon, because I think it could be used otherwhere. <sighs> OK, I'm reaching the end of the features I wanted to, to show you. Just some things about the group management capabilities. Uh, Simpa exposes a SOAP interface. Uh, roughly 20 different actions can be uh, performed through the, the SOAP interface. Subscribe to a list, create a list, uh, and so on. <laughs> Uh, that allows a third-party application to any, any other application allowed by SIMPA configuration to uh, query the SIMPA internal data. So how come it's a, it's a group manager? For some applications, such as DocuWiki, for example, or Lime Survey and some other, uh, we just created plugins that will request uh, for a user authenticated here, which, lab, which lists he or she is subscribed to in a SIMPA server. SIMPA returns a list of lists. That means a list of groups the user belongs to here. And 
then the third party application grants privileges due to uh, the fact that the user belongs to a group or another. Simpa can uh, also merge lists. You have several little lists. You can uh, create another list that will include all these little lists. So you can create larger groups. And uh, it differentiates, differentiates sorry, between a simple subscriber, a list owner, a list editor. That means what data here are returned uh, can give different privileges depending on what the user do for one group, what the user is for one group here. Um, that way, that allowed us to create a public groupware service for the French National Research and Education uh, community. Uh, that's something anybody from this community can create a list, it, a list on the SIMPA server. People only have to subscribe to the list to get access to a whole set of tools, of collaboration tools. So that's something that's used also by universities. Mm. And as you can manage groups either manually or automatically, you have all, uh, all what you can do in SIMPA to manage your list of subscribers can benefit other third-party applications as long as they can uh, query a SOAP web service. We are working on a REST web service too. Uh, one last thing, <laughs> customization. So that's a kind of dictionary. You can modify most SIMPA behaviors. You can uh, modify uh, how sim what SIMPA does at the, most, at the main server level for each virtual host and for each list in each virtual host. And for example, if I change, uh, I don't know, a list template at a virtual host level, any list created in this virtual host will benefit from this, ch this change and not the other virtual host. But if I change it at the server level, any list created in any virtual host will you be able to use it. It's cascading. What can you customize? The web interface, it's fully, it's just a, a big bunch of templates, actually, the web interface. It's quite computed any time you query, you query a, a page. Uh, and it's based on template toolkit, which is a very great, 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 great <laughs> piece of software. Uh, you can customize service messages, uh, the mail people receive when, um, when they subscribe to a list. For example, uh, we have training uh, sessions about Simpa in France, and when to people, uh, for people to attend the training session, they su subscribe to a list. And I just modified uh, the welcome message to give them information about <laughs> what, uh, what, where, the, where the session is, uh, how to come there, or what are the time and date, and so on. Uh, the list creation template, any scenario. Uh, you can create your own list parameters. If you don't think you, don't, you have roughly 100 parameters to, 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 for a list, uh, to configure a list, if you think it's not enough, you, could, you can create your own list parameters. Uh, you can add new attributes to users. B uh, by default, it's only uh, email and geekos name or last name. But you can add as many uh, fields for users to fill when they subscribe. And in the next version, you will be able to uh, populate these additional parameters uh, dir directly from LDAP or uh, an RDBMS. Uh, task, I didn't uh, speak about task. Uh, Let's, let's, let's forget it for now. Uh, default list and, well, you, you name it. Most, most of SIMPA is, uh, is configurable because I think it's, it's because of Perl. <laughs> because of the philosophy of the language used. Because that's one, what Perl users want to do. So. OK, so. Now, uh, I couldn't cover all the features, but let's go to switch to the SIMPA project. So it's a development project from Renater. Okay. Uh, the two authors are Etienne over there and I. We are easy uh, to, p to, to spot because we, we, we just dress the same. So ju ju just, just look at the t-shirt. <coughs> 
So it's a free software. That means we have contributors. Contributors from the Perl community are, are great. Uh, you will see that it can have some inconvenience, some, some backside. Um, in the last two years, uh, I, I had a lot of work to get new core developers because I, uh, I thought that maybe one day, suppose, Renater disappears. What becomes Simpa? And we have a large installed base. So that means we need to be responsible and get people involved, <laughs> other people than us. And we have three new developers, which are out of Renater. One of them, being, I present them just after. And uh, everything is developed with, uh, for now, with Renater tools. We have a forge, and we stick to this, basically because it provides a lot of features that are interesting, uh, bug tracker, feature tracker, uh, continuous integration that we are working on, and so on, and a wiki for the documentation that is coupled. So w it's until recently, it's only developed by Renater with uh, tools provided by Renater. Who are the developers now? Just so that you know them, because you may, you may know them. Uh, so we have Mark here from Strasbourg, which is an overall guru uh, in Perl. Uh, we have Guillaume, which is a security manager at a research center, and he's also very good at, uh, well, good Perl practices. He, we learned a lot from him. Uh, we have Soji that lives in Tokyo, uh, which is an absolute uh, email and encoding problem uh, guru. <laughs> That's him who made uh, Simpa switch to UTF-8. Um, Etienne, that uh, over there, who can code anything in any language you like. I don't know how his brains work. And, and, uh, and you've got me. You've got me. Uh, I do all the rest. I'm there, jack of all trades, you know. Uh, they let me do the doc, uh, community management, uh, make speech at, at Yapsi. And that's a pr actually a good thing because I'm the worst developer of all of them. So. And we have the lots, 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 and lots of contributors. And that's what's great for this software. Um, but <laughs> Simpa is 17 years old. It's free software. That means a long code history. This line uh, from Holo, I don't know if you know Holo, it's something that references free software and gives you data about it. So it's the number of lines in Simpa since 2001. You see wha what happened, big sum. So the code grows and grows. We receive contribution. Oh, another contribution. Great. Oh, we did this. Oh, a contribution. Oh, we can't understand anything. OK, let's cut in. And that's it. So it's a problem for uh, a free software because <coughs> lots of con contributors means a heterogeneous code. You know, you have, we had code specifically from actual Perl gurus. I, I, I learned something, I, I, I read something that still haunt my nights. It worked, it's wonderful. But for a lot of people such as me, it's very hard to understand. At the opposite, when actual Perl gurus look at what Etienne and I write, uh, it's very hard for them. They say, for example, we still use uh, uh, dollar underscore, no, everywhere. <laughs> and uh, so the problem is we have a large install base. You know, we can just uh, wipe everything right now because we need to issue new versions. They are waiting for it. People ask for new features sometimes for several years. So we need to issue these versions. So we need to be very careful when it touches the code, especially when we want to include new modules. Because SEPAN modules are great, but people in production environment want to install it through package. So that means the modules need to be packaged. Is it even possible? We don't know. <laughs> and you have also very old timers. I, I knew a, a 2.0 version of Simpa that was still running with 6.2 right now. 2.0 was 1999. But it works, so people don't touch it. What do they do when they need to upgrade? <laughs> so what we want to do? <laughs> we are actually engaged in a large code refactoring. Guillaume, the guy over there, you remember? 
with the sunglasses. He's doing it right now. That, that will be the 7.0 version of SIMPA. We want to implement unit tests. Yes, we didn't do any test on SIMPA. This was, done, this was tested live on our production server until it was good enough to be released as beta version. And two months later, it was considered stable. Once the code is refactored, we are moving to Git. That will be our Git repository, but it will be very easy to fork to GitHub for anybody. See where we're going? We want more contributors. <laughs> we want people to be able to understand our code, to fork it, and, as it can be forked to GitHub, to advertise about themselves. That they did it. Remember the speech about uh, Perl employment? Well, that's something more. So, what's the future for Simba? Uh, 6.2 is almost ready. We have a very large test matrix, which is only done manually now, and it will go beta very soon, I hope, uh, I hope for October. For 7.0, it, it will have the same functionalities as 6.2, but with new code and a new web interface, just to <laughs> encourage people to install it, because it will be far more, uh, it's a contribution for, from New Zealand. Thank you. Steve, if you look at it, thank you again. Um, and we need, that's what will be difficult. It, we, we, we want to need to keep the two ages of SIMPA usage. I spoke about very large server at the beginning of the speech, but actually there are very small organizations that use SIMPA, and not on a dedicated server, on a, de on a server that runs a lot of thi other things. So we want SIMPA to be able to be installed on clusters, if you want, in software as a service mode. But we want to keep it able to be standalone on a small server, easily installed and run. So that would be 7.0, thanks to the refactoring. And software as a service will come in 7.1. That's the big direction. Uh, we want also, in later version, implement multimedia message broadcasting. Mail is not enough sometimes. You need to send mail to other direction. For through SMS, you, you could also, we could also um, contact a web service to update a page. That's easy. Once you have the, once you have the data, the mail, you have the text, you just have to uh, broadcast, this to what, what broadcast this to whatever service you want. And with the refactored code, it will be easy to do. Well, <laughs> That's what I say, I'm saying today. And we also want plugin because there are a lot of small functionalities that people want to, want to uh, implement and uh, uh, we don't want them to have to wait until we integrate their patch. They could do simply plugins. We don't know exactly uh, uh, how we'll do it, but I heard tomorrow, uh, today, this morning about a plugin that could be, uh, a mo CPAN module that could do, do the trick. So that's the guidelines we want to implement also, uh, internationalize, internationalize email addresses, uh, another RFC that uh, allows you to track what happens to a message uh, using uh, received by headers, uh, and so on, so on, so on. We have 300 feature requests waiting. <laughs> so, uh, I said that the number of core developers uh, gradually uh, increased. So that were the two original developers. Then I arrived. <laughs> then Etienne arrived. Then the two original authors uh, g got out of the project. But it still increased then thanks to the three others. So what I'd like to see is this. This continues this way because, uh, well, actually, I'm thinking about you. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that's what we want. How can you participate? You don't have to code. <coughs> you can, sure, do some development. You can make bug fixes. You can make features. But it's a free software. There is a lot of other things that can be done. Uh, you can make documentation. Uh, it's a wiki. The Simpa documentation is a wiki. Anybody subscribed to Simpa users, at least at renater.fr, can modify the doc. Yeah? Because it's a group manager. So. <laughs> authorization on the wiki is uh, defined by the SIMPA server. 
Uh, you can give support on list if you know about uh, if you know what how it works. If you can just a little make and help, and uh, you can also package Simpa if if you can create packages for Simpa and you know somebody who can package or especially somebody who can explain how to enter a distribution. Please let us know. <laughs> we are really interested in this because we want to help people in studying Simpa and. As we, the number of developers is growing, uh, I, I really need help managing the project. I did my best to, to make democratic decision, but you know we have two real gurus in the project. That means we have one, one, one in excess. <laughs> Sometimes it's very hard for them to, 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 to agree. So I have to, me, I'm the less, uh, the, the least good, the worst programmer, the worst pearl, uh, but I have to decide between their two opinions. So I would have then need any help about how to manage uh, a software project that's growing. <laughs> and any experience about managing such large uh, project uh, is welcome, <laughs> warmly welcome. Uh, so what's the future? Uh, so new code, okay, easy to understand. Thanks, Guillaume, again. We want to create a better SEMPA, more beautiful, easier to use, uh, easier to deploy. And one last thing, hey, remember who said one last thing? <laughs> okay, we want uh, to offer a free mailing list hosting service because I heard about uh, some mongers group who start using Google Groups. That's bad, very bad. And we don't care, we have an infrastructure at Renatair uh, installing a new uh, virtual host takes us 30 minutes. That's all. Just need a domain. <laughs> so we can install such a server. Originally, I wanted to propose it to the whole World Wide Web, uh, World Pearl uh, community, but I think it's politically difficult right now because of history. Right. Uh, anyway, so anybody wanting uh, hosting, just let us know. We can deploy a server. It's easy. We just need a domain. And we deploy a server, and anybody from the Pell community will be allowed to create a list on this server and get all the collaborati collaborative tools we are using. So uh, it can be tempting just because I'm, I'm somebody twisted and I want to, 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 to get you. Yes, you know, see, see the, um, how the world I comes today. That means the evil side is, is winning right now. So I, I, that's why I take evil means to get you in my net. Okay, so please, if you want, join us. Join, join the Levi, Evil side. Uh, it's a gross industry. You're wa warmly welcome to, to join us. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. We have, I think, five minutes for questions. If you have any questions. Yes? Yes? What are the features of the uh, new Twitter campaign? Yes? Yes. So I repeat the two questions as there is no microphone. Uh, what are the features of the new web interface and are we thinking about a REST interface? First, the f hello. First of all, the new web interface is simpler. It gives by default less options. And pe most people tend to think that the web simple web interface is just too difficult to understand. So it's simplified. And it's also cooler. <laughs> it looks more modern and uh, it's got a better CSS. So uh, we tested it on their server in New Zealand and uh, it's actually uh, nicer, easier. I think people new to Simpa, because we must think of <laughs> about people new to Simpa, uh, need, uh, need to get something they can understand with an ergonomy that's closer to what people are used to see on social networks and such. That's it. Uh, about the REST interface, actually, it exists already. <laughs> uh, Simpa can be, can use, uh, I don't know, it's basic. Uh, it can uh, propagate uh, group information uh, through REST. The REST it's, it's REST full inter interface uh, based on uh, our OAuth authorization mechanism. Actually, uh, Etienne could, can tell more about it because he did all the, all the job about it. But yes, it exists. But once the refactoring is done, uh, I want most SIMPA functionalities available through all interfaces. We have a command line interface, we have SOAP interface, we have REST interface, web interface, and mail interface because you can uh, send comments to SIMPA through mail also. And 
with a better code, it's easier to make all functionalities available through all interfaces. That would provide uh, an actual true uh, API to users. Yes, another question? I have two questions. One, is mail stored permanently in the database? Mm. And second, how does it handle attachments? Has? Attachments. Attachments, okay. Uh, yes, uh, mails are stored permanen permanently in the web archives. Uh, that's a problem we try to tackle. <laughs> because you need to uh, remove, that remo remove them manually. Uh, it's difficult because for some lists you want to keep uh, web archives for historical purposes. Um, the problem is, we, in France, we have uh, very strong uh, privacy protection laws, and we need to uh, bring anonymity after a while. And uh, sure, we could uh, remove uh, information from a mail, for, for the from field, for example. You don't know any anymore from who the mail came, but you have names in the mail. So we we didn't find any good solution to correctly anonymize web archives. Uh, the second question was about uh, attachments. Uh, attachments in the web archives, they are stored uh, just, just on the page. You, you have a link to clink. Uh, to, uh, a link to clink. Um, that's for the web archives. We have an URLIs mode also for people who don't want to receive attachments or you want to prevent people from sending uh, large attachments to, uh, to a large mailing list. In that case, if the attachment uh, exceeds uh, a certain size that you can customize, obviously, uh, it's stored on the server and replaced by uh, a link. Obviously, it will not work if the mail is S9 signed because in such situation, we would break the S9 signature. So, we are thinking about how to correctly expire our archive. Technically, we could do a lot of things. We, have, uh, we need to think about how to do it in order to let Listmasters customize the way it works. It would work on their server. Any other question? We have time for one more question. One more question? This is again about databases. You listed a number of them that it supports. Which one receives the most attention or the most development? Which, uh, For example, do you get a better experience from MySQL versus Postgres because more people focus development time on MySQL? Well, um, so the RDBMS that receives more attention is MySQL because that's what we know. <laughs> uh, after, uh, we have a uh, really great contributor that uh, always keep SQLite up to date. <laughs> and uh, we did a lot of work on PostgreSQL, so we had a lot to learn a lot. For example, these are the three RDBMS that are automatically updated when you change version and the database structure change. When the first time you, s you, you run simpa.pl, the database structure is updated. For Oracle, we have difficulties, and Sybase is, well, I don't want to, to, to speak ill of, of the dead. <laughs> OK, let's thank our speaker. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And make sure to, to watch the video of the two other uh, lectures that was, were, in my opinion, very interesting also. Comment? Ah oh, ouais, yes. We have some, some Simpa t-shirts. If you want one, just go there. We have two colors and three sizes. It's free. <laughs> we won't want to bring them back by plane.